What's up, guys? Welcome to another bonus edition episode where we just diagnose the week. We talk about the week. We talk about how crazy it was. Uh, we talk about uh, a little bit of culture, and we talk about uh, some of your questions. Um, this was a weird week, and as always, I don't know if you guys know this, I just do this off the cuff, so uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a pretty busy person, so if, if, if it's a stupid show, I'll just be like, wow, he was really off this week, <laughs> so... I apologize. I am drinking um, a Fly Jack Hazy uh, IPA, 96 cals. I hate, I hate these beers that are like low calorie beers. They just, they just taste like a Bud Light. They are this? Don't don't. Why why make it IPA with low calories? I got it on a Costco pack. So <laughs> shout out to Costco beer packs, but. Ew, it's not that good. And it, well, it's kind of like uh, this week, man. It's like we thought we were going to get a debate, and we didn't. The presidential debate committee is garbage. Uh, you can tell the media, okay, the media, uh, technology, apps, um, software <laughs> developers, whatever. They are showing their cards completely. And I don't think they care. Um, I think they're like, it's like this beer. It's telling you it's a good beer. It's telling you it's real. But it's really just a 96 calorie beer. So it's not even that good. But it looks good. It's like, it's like the media today. They want to pretend like they're, you know, all about the facts. They're all about giving you the truth. They're all about what you need to know. Instead, they would rather give you the 96 calories. Oh, this is good. This is right off the cough. Wow. They would get, rather give you the 96 calories. They'd rather give you the, the stories you don't really need to hear. You know, to keep you lean. <laughs> uh, they would rather just do another orange mad bat orange man bad story, which is are you like me where you're just exhausted by that? Um I don't I don't understand people who aren't exhausted by that. I don't understand I have liberal friends and liberal people in my family who they just soak it up. How can you not get bored of it? How can you not look at some of the things Donald Trump has done and gone, actually that's pretty good. Even if you're a liberal, I, 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 I don't get, and I'm trying to be, uh, the one minute news is really just trying, I'm trying my best to just stick with the facts, um, but I'm getting really exhausted, not like interjecting every once in a while with some of the things I think about and some of the things I say, and I'm trying to be a good middle ground where I just, you know, I don't want to like, you know, I'm not like a Trump supporting channel. And I'm not like a Biden supporting channel. Um, and I'm not like a whatever third candidate <laughs> Kanye channel. Maybe I'm a Kanye. That Kanye campaign was pretty, that campaign ad was pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I was like, okay, this is the most presidential campaign ad I've seen in a minute. He was just talking about us coming together. And I actually believed it as opposed to like when Biden talks about it. I'm like, dude, there's nothing about your presidency is going to bring us together. Um, but... I just, the media this week was so exhausting to watch and so exhausting to be a part of, and they are just ramping up more and more and more. And the more I just try to look for the facts for you guys every single week, every single day, the more exhausted I am, the more I want to just, my personality is starting to come out. And I'm sorry if that is annoying to you guys, but I honestly don't care. Um, I am enjoying doing the news. I'm enjoying uh, just, you know, trying to give you the facts, but I also like interjecting of things every once in a while. Maybe I'll just do more of this for my own mental health, but it's, it's exhausting to read uh, the stories that are put out and it's exhausting just to see them uh, write their narrative. And you can tell what, um, what party, whether it's Republican or Democratic Party, they all have talking points and they all try to put those talking points in articles every single day in order for you to hear the same sayings over and over again so it gets in your head so you think about it when it comes to the polls. And 
I get it. It's a sales tactic. It's a it's a very wise thing to do. Not wise, but a very a good thing to do in order for you to get sold on the, your uh, their candidates' uh, position and the things that they need to say. But as a consumer of the news, as a as a as a human being, as a American, um, it's exhausting, and it's exhausting to continually. There's always like a new news segment or a new news source or a new like news personality. And sometimes I look at myself with that and I go, do I even, am I like making a dent? Am I just another blip on the radar? Am I, um, do I, what, what makes my channel different? And I think I want to always be, uh, somebody who just searches for truth and, uh, is open to, logical arguments whether I agree with it or not and that's what I kind of um have gone down to and I want to engage in more uh, arguments and engage in more like dialogue with you guys um and learn about what you think and why you think the way you think because I think that's that's what I get most out of politics is I like just hearing uh the different viewpoints and why as opposed to just I feel like politics is now just like children screaming. And if I don't get my way, it's like unbelievable. I like the whole thing about like Feinstein uh, saying nice things or like hugging Graham and like uh, Lindsey Graham and the left was like losing their mind saying she's like lost the plot. And I thought you guys were the party that was supposed to bring us together, which I know is totally BS, but I, I, how can you be all about civility and want to bring a uh, healing to this country, whatever it is, um, and get angry at your candidate, your, you know, your politician that you support and they are reaching across the aisle and they're like hugging somebody or talking to somebody or even having conversation with somebody. That's ridiculous. And I think it goes for both ways, but just to see the left is ramping up more and more because I think they're just at the point where they're like ready for like war. <laughs> and you could see that by the town halls. I did a live stream on my YouTube channel of the different town halls. And I was watching both and I was flipping back and forth to both. And I, a couple of you joined me. Thank you. Shout out to the few of you that joined me and made me laugh and might've said some things inappropriate. Who cares? But it was, it was a good time, but it was a, a direct, it was incredibly, if, if you don't realize how like aggressive the media is lately, if you're not, if you're just not in that world, it was put out in front of you. If you were switching back and forth, I mean, if you watch the debate, even the debate stage, Trump's was outside. So, you know, the uncomfortability of being outside, uh, the chair that they gave him didn't even look like it really fit him. He was sitting half off the chair. So even that was uncomfortable. And these are things people don't think about, but these are things as a producer, as somebody who's uh, creating a show, as somebody who's, uh, you know, a host, they are thinking about these things. They want to know, uh, they want to make you feel comfortable. They want to make you feel uncomfortable. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a very good tactic if you don't like the person to make them feel as uncomfortable as possible. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Eric Andre show. I know that show is totally inappropriate for some, but that show is all about making you feel uncomfortable uh, with his guests. And it, it, the things that were chosen and these ideas of these like, non-committal voters or these undecided voters, which is totally a lie, uh, like on Trump's side, you could just tell, um, I just don't believe those people. I don't, I don't trust, do you, I mean, do you trust news media personalities, news media picking out these undecided voters for, for, uh, for an election when you know that they're very liberal as a media organization? No, no one trusts them. And the people that do trust them, it's out of complete ignorance. It's not out of like uh, any kind of like secure foundation. So I watched the Trump thing and it was she, Samantha was just arguing with him. And you knew that going into it. It wasn't like I saw like a lot of my conservative friends were just like, I can't believe she did that. Are you serious? Have you not been watching the media this past year, this past 10 years, the past 15 years? It's been ramping up more and more and more. They feel like they have a duty to come out against Trump. They feel like they have 
if they aren't aggressive, if they aren't pushing his, uh, him in a corner, if if they don't have their that moment where like what she had that moment when she called him, you're not a crazy uncle, you're the president. Like they they feel like they need these moments so bad in order to for their base to go. You did a great job. Way to be a moderate host, or way to be like you know. You really gave it to him. It's all about sticking it to Donald Trump on whatever liberal or whatever news outlet. It's and so when you watched her just debate and like push him and even spout absolute nonsense, like continually asking him to say, "Do you disavow white supremacy?" Oh my God, that is not a problem in this country. Yes, white supremacists are the most evil people. Screw them. Who cares about them? But are we watching white supremacists just like destroy streets right now? Destroy communities? Shoot people? No! So why is that even a question right now? It's like asking, you know, aren't you worried about the ants right now? I didn't even know there was a problem with the ants. Well, you should have known. Why won't you disavow the bigger ants killing the little ants? And it's these... It's, it's like these ghost stories. It's these fables that they've, the media has created this narrative for people to actually believe that isn't true in order for you to like be focused on things that their candidate isn't saying. And it's exhausting to watch. And it's exhausting to fight against. And like even my wife came home and was like, I can't believe she said, I'm like, I, how do you, it's so obvious that the, that, that was the ploy. It was like, the, the liberal media, NBC, like, I even saw Conan. I can't believe they're showing Donald Trump. Really? You can't believe the president's going to be asked questions on your network? Like, that's such an incredibly harsh thing to understand. I'm a Comedians getting involved in politics, shut up. Just make me laugh. God, I run to, I run to comedy to escape real-life problems. Or make me feel better about myself, not for you to talk about politics. <laughs> we get it. All celebrities are liberal. This is, and then there's like a few that are conservative. So like, when like Taylor Swift, I'm supporting Biden. Really, who cares? We already assumed. Um, but it was just so. It, it was just like something you expected. You could tell she knew she had a job to do when she went into the debate. She had something she needed to accomplish, and so. She, and I remember people were like praising her for the work that she did. When somebody like me, who is, I, I consider myself a fair minded, logical thinker, would think, this is, not, this is not how you have a town hall. This is not how you ask somebody questions. You ask open ended questions, and whether you agree with the answer or not, you let the voters decide what's true and what's not true. You ask questions that are on people's minds. <coughs> um, and what are on people's minds right now, really white supremacists, that's really consuming people's minds right now? I don't think so. I think people are worried about, uh, is the country opening up? Is it locking down? Um, do I have to wear a mask for the rest of my life? <laughs> um, is white, like, all these like things that are, um, what kind of jobs aren't coming back? What kind of jobs are coming back? Um, what is our relationship with China right now? What's our relationship with Russia right now? What's going on with Azerbaijan and um, Armenia? Like, is that a, a conflict we need to be worried about? Um, how are the cases going on in the rest of the world? Um, is this just like the flu? Were we actually wrong? So these are things people are thinking about, not white supremacists or Antifa. What about in Portland? Are we just going to, like, how are those citizens affected? Like, do we, they need our help? Uh, are those politicians just so corrupt that they're just allowing their city to be destroyed in order for some kind of, uh, you know, fascist regime to come in and destroy everything when they call themselves anti-fascist, which is hilarious. Um, and then we looked on the Biden side, and we looked at George Stephanopoulos, used to work for the Clintons, duh, um, just, you know, give him T-balls. He pushed him a little bit. I was surprised he even pushed him a little bit on the court packing thing. And it was almost like he was encouraging him to say that he is, should be excited about court packing, that he should be pumped out of his mind. Like, this is something you're, you're open to, right, Joe? This, you're open to this, right? 
And it was almost like he was excited about the thought of it, which court packing is like the dumbest thing in the world. And I want to do, uh, I think I want to do a video on court packing. The, even the idea alone is stupid because once you open it up, it's never going to end. And then it just becomes another way to elect uh, elected officials to elect their own. And then, um, and it's not even what the court was originally thought to be. And it was just supposed to interpret the law. It wasn't supposed to be. Anyways. Um, and then, so we looked at Joe Biden. He had somebody that was already on his side. The moderator was already on his side. We already knew that. There was some guy that was asking questions in the audience that used to write speeches for Obama. Whoa, no way. You mean he gave up a softball question too? And, you know, that wasn't talked about in media outlets, except for I saw it on Tucker. But there was like, and then, okay, and then I talked about Trump's chair. His chair was this big, white, comfortable chair. So it was a very, you know, a, a comforting atmosphere. So even he was walking to it, you know, he was more comfortable already. He was inside, it was AC, you know. Um, and he even had a longer, I, I, he had a longer time to talk. And the questions that were given to him were so easy. No one really pressed him, except for that, that one kid called him out on the, what else do you offer black people except for saying, if you ain't black, you don't vote for me thing. And then the media was praising that. And then that New York Times, the New York Post thing came out, and it wasn't even a question. How could George not even ask? Not even giving him an opportunity to lie or talk him on stage saying, you know, I don't believe any of this. He didn't even ask that question because Twitter and Facebook did their best, you know, to dumb down and to shut off any kind of idea um, about the story. And it's not even being debunked because it's real. And, and what we're finding out now is that even Hunter Biden's lawyers have called the repair shop asking for the, the computer back. So these are, it's a, and, and nothing's being disputed because it is real. So now they're just in a mode where they're hoping people just assume it's fake. Or the liberals think it's fake news. It doesn't even matter. They just hate, liberals hate Trump so much they don't care who is president. This idea that they're like for Joe Biden is ridiculous. Because you look at a guy who's completely losing it without a huge teleprompter and isn't asked hard questions. And yeah, he did okay on the debate. Um, but you know, let's be real. Chris Wallace did not press him on anything. Um, and didn't allow Trump to press him on things. He stopped Trump all the time. Cause you know, I want to give each other time or whatever, but they liberals hate Trump so much that they'll do whatever it takes to get him out of, out of power. And I don't understand why I, they do so much. I guess, I guess he, I mean, he's, he's just, I think they hate him so much because he turned out to be more conservative than people thought. I mean, he would turn out to be more conservative than I thought. I thought he was going to be um, more moderate, more liberal and just come out with the face of Republicans, but I don't know. He's turned out to be way more conservative than I thought, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, this week was insane. And the, uh, another insane thing is the fact that journalists aren't backing uh, the New York Times, uh, the New York Post. These people that claim to be about you know, free speech, journalism, finding the truth, they're not even coming out against uh, censorship in any kind of way possible. That's insane. When, so when people say that the, the press is the enemy of the people, it is when they're censored. And when you're censoring stories that are about a candidate who you support, that's wrong. And that, then you become the enemy of the people because you are censoring information that needs to be out there for all. And I don't, I don't understand why more news outlets aren't, you know, encouraged, like, fighting against the story. Or even, like, news personalities. They just shut up about it. Just cowards. They just, they're all about the money. 
they don't they don't care about finding the facts and the news. They just all want to be celebrities. They all want to be news personalities. They all want to have 10,000 likes on Instagram. They all want to be blue check marks. They all just... They don't care about the facts. I, I hate that. I hate it so much with like deep within my soul. I mean... <sighs> So keep fighting for facts with me. Keep fighting for logical thinking with me. If you want to be on my show, if you want to be on the One Minute News and, um, you know, get interviewed or just, you know, have a little talk, come on. I don't want to do this all by myself. I don't want to just make stuff up as I go. I mean, I want you guys to join with me. I want to create a community and create a force of people who are fighting against Just, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just tired of like, you know, this network is owned by only conservatives. This network is only owned by liberals. And and that's great. But I just want to fight for the facts. (laughs) And right now the facts that are leaning more, showing more on the conservative side because liberals are losing their freaking mind right now. And that's just how it, how, now I'm not saying all liberals. When I say liberals, I don't mean logical liberals or people that uh, can look at somebody like Joe Biden and say, this guy is out of his mind. Those liberals, I like. I like you guys. Come on the show. And I think I have a few of you following me because you realize there is people out there that, uh, that uh, I, don't, I would never say that like I would only vote Republican forever. I would I would vote for a Democrat if the Democrat aligned with my views. I don't care about party lines. I don't care about I care about ideas, uh, and and the way I think that society should be run. I mean, for the good of society, not necessarily good for me, but just for everybody as a whole. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's like good immediately. It could be good better down the road. So. What a weird week. Um, so I love you guys. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you, those that are still listening to my rant. Um, I hope I make an impact in your life. I hope I bring some kind of joy to your life. Um, I hope I make you laugh. I hope, and I think I want to, I can't help but make a little comments here. Now, I'm just going to do it now. I can't. I mean, I'm doing this for free, so why not just do how I want to do it? You know what I mean? It's, it's life, man. Um, so I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for listening to the One Minute News bonus episode of my recap for the week. What an exhausting week. Um, I want to do more live shows, and especially with like rallies and stuff like that. And I appreciate you guys. I really do. And I'm not just saying that. I honestly do appreciate every single one, even just every one of you. Um, Make sure if you guys, make sure you're following me on Instagram. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. And uh, I'm on Parler as well. And also make sure you're uh, subscribed to me on YouTube. Um, I'm trying to build up that YouTube because I think I'm doing a lot more live streams. And I would love to connect more with you guys on YouTube and live on Instagram as a way to talk to each other, see how each other are doing. Um, And again, if you want to be on my show, if you want to be interviewed, I would love to interview you and just hear about, um, you know, your political background and why you believe, why you're voting for who you're voting for. The election is coming up, people. And I, little shout out, I'm going to be doing a a live stream election night. I think I'm going to do it for like eight hours. Join me on the One Minute News on YouTube. I'm also going to be on live stream on Instagram, but YouTube will be more fun because I'll have more interactive stuff. I'll probably be doing some drinking games and stuff like that. It's going to be a it's going to be a hellish ride. So join me on the live stream at some point. Even just come in and say hi. I don't care. Hope you guys have a fantastic day, whatever day you're listening to it. If you're in the car, stuff like that. Um, 
whoever would foster love covers over an offense, but whoever repeats the manner separates close friends. Enjoy your life. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye.